hi great fashion people welcome back to my youtube channel thanks so much for always and i hope you get value for what you learn today we are going to be drafting a basic gown pattern with back and hip contouring method so these are the required measurements to take when drafting a gown and before we move further we have to calculate our hip measurement to contour the hip first thing first is that our front hip is different from the back hip because there is bum bum at the back area unlike the front area. And that is why when you divide your round hip by four, you have to remove at least one inch or 1.5 inches as the case may be from the front hip to the back hip to create more room for the bum bum to sit on. So I've put up a formula and an example for you to understand what I'm explaining. Now let us start our drafting. The first thing I'm going to be doing is to rule a straight line. We are creating it as our starting line, just to serve as a guide for us to have a straight pattern. Then afterwards, I am going to mark my gown length. So your gown length can be for a short gown, a mini gown, a three-quarter gown, and a, a long gown. So as the case may be, just follow the, the process. It works for everything. Afterwards, I am going to plot my workspace for me to know the amount of paper I need. And to do that, I am going to use the biggest part of the body. And the biggest part of my round body is the hip area. I will divide it by four and I, I added extra one inch just for enough room, like to have enough space. So that's what I'm doing there and I am trying to connect the lines. So this way you are going to know how much pattern you need. Then afterwards, I am going to input the shoulder measurement divided by two. Half of it I will input and I will add half inch as sewing allowance. Then the next thing for me to input is my neckline. And I'm going to be making use of a basic neckline of 3 inches by 3 inches. So if you are drafting for a plus size, 3.5 inches by 3.5 inches will do. For my shoulder slope, I'll come down by 1 inch. The distance from our neckline to our shoulder tip is slant. Our shoulder is not straight. That's why there is something called shoulder slope. Then I will use my curve ruler to connect the neckline together. The next thing after is to calculate the arm length. And to do that, you divide your bust measurement by 6 and you add 1.5 inches to it. Then after, I am going to measure what I got as total from the shoulder measurement I imputed and I will mark it on that point where the ammo length was marked and I will rule a straight line. This is just to serve as a guide for us to have a straight line, a straight and perfect ammo length. To get the ammo curve, I will divide the ammo length by two and from that point I will come in by half inch. Using my straight ruler, I will connect it to the shoulder tip like so and after I will use my curved ruler, I will also make a curve so this way we have gotten our ammo curve. Then now I am going to impute the vertical measurements. And our vertical measurements are the bust point, the half length or the waistline. We are not going to be making use of under bust because it is not a dress with bust here. It is just a basic gown. So I will impute my vertical lines and that is my bust point my waistline or also the half length it is also called half length so that's, that's what i am ruling there and i will label it now to get the distance between the waistline to the hip line you can make use of seven inches or eight inches or nine inches as the case may be seven inches are people with small stature while eight inches is the most commonly used these are for people who have bum bum or and hips and why 9 inches are also used for people who have big hips. Like some people can have very big hips and people who have heights, like tall people. So you can use 7, 8 or 9 inches as the case may be. So I'm making use of 7 inches for this um, pattern I'm drafting. Then after, we are going to input our dart. And to get your dart, you make use of your boss pan. Boss pan is also called nipple to nipple measurement. So using my boss pan, I'll divide it into two and I'm going to input half of it on my bust point, on my waistline, and on my hip line. Then I'll rule a straight line. So on the hip line, I'll come up by 2 inches. And on the bust point, I will come down by 1 inch. For the dart intake, I'm going to be taking a dart of 1 inch. Half on each side of the line. Then I will connect together. I'll first connect from the waistline to the bust point, like the part I came down by 1 inches from the bust point. 
and it is going to form a triangular shape like this. And I also connect same thing again to the e plane. That part I came up by two inches. Also, you can make use of one point five inch and two inches for your dart. All this will help the waist to look smarter. Now I'm going to divide my bust measurement by four, and I will impute it and connect it to the arm o. Then also I will impute, I will divide my round waist divided by four. Then that one inch dart intake, whatever the dart intake you took, you have to add it back to the waist measurement to have, avoid shortage. I will impute it. I will connect it with my ruler. Now my hip. You remember the hip measurement we've calculated earlier. The front hip. What you got, the result you got for the front hip, you will impute it now. So remember that our front hip measurement is different from the back because our back has more bum and needs to be contoured to give this illusion of shape, whether the person has bum bum or not. So now to get the knee measurement, this works for whether a long gown or, or a short gown. I will deduct one inch from the result of my front hip measurement and I will impute it on the knee line and on the M line as shown in the video. So this way you have a smart gown. But if you don't want your gown to be very pencil, if you want a straight gown, because there are some gowns that they doesn't have to be so smart, depending on what you are making. For example, if the gown is something that we have a ruffle at the edge, or you want the gown to be free, you just deduct half inch. Unlike this one that I deducted one inch, you are going to deduct half inch. So that way, the gown will still be looking a bit pencil, but it will not be too tight. It will not be tight fitted. I hope you understand what I'm explaining. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. So our front pattern is ready. And now we are going to move ahead to the back pattern. The first thing I'm going to be marking at the back pattern is the length of the gown. So here yeah, I am just marking it and I'm trying to rule a straight line. And afterwards, I am going to impute the zipper allowance. For now, this, this zipper allowance is going to serve as a temporary zipper allowance because it is going to serve as a guide for us to contour the back zipper. Our back is not straight. And if you want a beautiful gown, a gown that will bring out the silhouette of your shape, you need to contour your back. And afterwards, I'm going to impute my shoulder measurement divided by two and I will add half inch as my sewing allowance. From that point, I'll come down by one inch to serve as my shoulder slope. Now I'll impute my neckline, which is three inches for the neck width. Then I'll rule a straight line, connecting the shoulder tip together to the neck width. And this way we'll create our shoulder slope. Now for the neck length, the neckline length, I'm going to make use of two inches. So there's no basis around the neckline with a dress with zipper. Whatever is convenient for you, you can make use of one inch. You can even have a low back, but I'm just making use of two inches. So now I'm going to measure the result I got from the front pattern, as in for my arm O length, and I will impute it. Then I will also measure the overall measurement I got from my shoulder measurement and impute it. All this is just to get a straight arm O length. Then I'll connect to the shoulder tip, and my arm O length has been formed. Now we need to create our chest line. We are going to be in need of our chest line at the back pattern because we are going to be making use of it when we are imputing our darts. So, and naturally your chest line is where your arm mullet stops, except in some cases where you want to adjust the neckline. But for the back, your chest line is where your arm mullet stops. So I'll mark it and I'll rule a straight line as shown in the video. Then now I'll come out from that arm hole length by half inch. Using my curve ruler, I will connect my arm hole like so. And I will label my chest line. Now I'll impute my vertical measurement, which is the waistline. We've imputed the chest line already because it is one of those vertical measurements. Then I will rule a straight line. So from that waistline, I will come down by seven inches for my hip line. Remember, I explained the different measurements used for hip line when we're drafting the front pattern so now i'm going to contour the back zipper of my pattern and we have three ways of contouring our back zipper we have the 50 percent means the 100 percent means and the 75 percent means for 50 percent is 0.5 inches 
75% is 0.75 and 100% is 1 inch. For plus sizes, you make use of 1 inch and you can also make use of 0.75 inch. While for small sizes, you make use of 0.5 inch and 0.75 inch. But for this video, I'm making use of 0.75 inch. And you, you will see that when I came in, I slanted it straight into my bodies, as in on the upper bodies. And on the hip line too, I, I slanted it straight into the hip. That way the back has been contoured. Now, also we have to contour the bum bum. And to do so, if you take your, you, all you just need to do is to come down by 5 inches from your hip line. You come down by 5 inches from your hip line. And on that point, you came down by five inches. You come in by half inch. Then you use your straight ruler to rule it straight into your hip line. So you will be noticing a shape. That shape alone has given an illusion to the bum bum area. And it has contoured the bum. It will give this fit, perfect fit. It will not just make the bum bum area look straight, as in very straight. It will give you this illusion. And now I am now going to impute my new zipper line earlier i made use of 1.5 inch so those places we've contoured i'll start returning that 1.5 inch back like i'll start returning it back so it's not something you're going to rush with you have to take your time to be marking it and you'll be following the new lines and as you are following it you are inputting the 1.5 inches and now i'm going to use my straight ruler to connect those broken lines together this is not something you are going to rush with so by the time you sew this cloth, both the bum bum has been contoured, the zipper, the back zipper has been contoured, and it will make the cloth to fit perfectly well on the back area. And this idea alone can up your sewing game. So I'm going to take my time to connect the lines together like so. So now we've marked our new zipper line and I will label it my zipper allowance. The next thing for us to do now is to impute our dart measurement. And because we've contoured the back zipper, our dart can't start from that straight line that was, um, like was serving as the starting line. It will start from that point where the zipper was contoured. So I will come in by my boss pan measurement divided by 2 and I will impute it on the waistline. So we, to, for us to get a straight dart, we have to see make use of that line. That is why that line is not totally useless. That line, you can see the point. So from that line, I'll measure the total inches I got using that straight line. And I'll input it on the chest line. And I'll rule a straight line. So why doing this? It will make our dart straight. Because the waistline has been contoured, our dart cannot be straight on the waistline. But it has to be straight on every other part of the body. And for you to get that, that's just the trick. You will use that straight line as a guide. Whatever you get as total, including the bust pan measurement, half of the bust pan measurement, you will input it on the chest line and on the hip line. This will help you to get a straight line. And for my dart intake for the back measurement, I'm going to make use of one inch. This works for every sizes. One inch is okay for your back dart intake. It's only at the front we tend to do contouring for that areas like when you are contouring with that you can use 1.5 inches or 2 inches just to make it more fitted at the front but at the back one inch is okay so yeah we're not deducting anything i will just rule it straight into the i'll connect it straight into the hip line and i also do the same thing i'll connect it straight into the chest line then after i'm going to impute my body measurement my boss divided by four but please take note that all the measurements we are now going to be imputing is going to start from the point where we've contoured. So whatever, like those slant areas that was contoured, your measurements will start from those points that the contouring has taken place, not from the straight line. So please take note of all these things. The waist measurements, I will impute it and I will return the dart measurements back. And now for the hip measurement, remember the hip calculation we did earlier in this video. That's what I'm going to be imputing. So if you notice, you'll be, you'll be noticing that when we are now imputing the body measurement at the back area, it was not forming shape. It won't look like it is forming shape until you finish sewing the cloth. When you sew it, it, you'll be surprised that it will align well with the front. Reason being that some 
addition and subtraction has been done on the back area then on the knee line i am going to deduct half inch from what i got from the hip line and i am going to input it on the knee line and on the length then i will cut so please i want you to take your time to study your pattern before you cut it can be confusing it's not compulsory you draft your front pattern on the same paper if you know you can't, you are not used to the lines yet, you can draft them on separate paper. Because at times when they are side by side, the former lines and the new lines can be confusing. So study your lines and take your time to cut. So here is our video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in my next video.